I'm excited about the topic, the first topic that I have today, which is the release of the James Webb Space Telescope uh, images. There were five that were released, but there's one that I particularly have been excited about and been working on is the sort of replacement for the whole deep field. It's the James Webb deep field, and President Biden uh, actually made a talk about that too. And I have been working with my, my colleagues to try and understand some of the things that we can learn about the early universe of that. We already have learned some things. And so first, I want to do a little talk about why the James Webb is exciting, what's different about it, and uh, what new kind of things we should be look, looking for with it, and what its powers are going to be. So I'm going to share my screen and show you some pictures. This is a picture of the James Webb Space Telescope. And uh, you can see the most impressive thing about is the gold arrangement in the center. This is the primary mirror, which has got a slight gold coaling on the silver ring and so forth. There is then three rods that stick up that hold a secondary mirror. And then they reflect this signal that came from the primary to the secondary down through that little pyramid in the center to where the CCDs, the near infrared and the far infrared CCDs, are located. We can also see underneath it, at the very bottom, the antenna that transmits the data back and forth to the Earth and the spacecraft bus that does all the operations to keep the things running. And in between, a series of sun shields, each separated from the other, so the heat can be rated out to the sides through that slot and keep the whole thing cool. So there there's two primary purposes here. That is to have the telescope be very big and be able to work at infrared wavelengths, which means it has to be colder so that the telescope apparatus itself doesn't radiate into it. It does that because we're looking at very distant objects and uh, the expansion of the universe takes their light from the visible into the infrared and infrared, and you need to prepare things like that. So you can compare this to the Hubble Space Telescope, which has been a workhorse for 20 years. We are used to getting a new picture like every Tuesday. You can see the two telescopes, that the JWST is much larger, but if you look down at the bottom of the picture, you can see what the primary mirror looks like with the human standing next to it in both cases. And you can see the primary mirror is much larger. And because of that, even though it has longer wavelengths, the James the Webb telescope can actually see with slightly better resolution than Hubble can. Because it has so much more collecting area, it can look to much more distant regions in space. And that infrared allows you to look at the more distant space, but also allows you to peer through some dust. One of the first pictures that was released was the Southern Ring, or the Ace Burst Nebula, which is a giant expanding sphere of gas and dust that's lit up by a dying star at the center. And you can see the star in the center, and you can see the cloud that's around it being blown out. There's a hot center cavity, and then the dust is cooling as it comes further in. And here, that picture was the near infrared. Here's the near mid infrared. You can see there's actually another star in there that's a binary pair with that dying star. And it's, it shows up in this picture. And you can see the gas and the dust shows up differently at the different wavelengths. Here's another picture that's quite spectacular. Stefan's Quintet of Galaxies. An astronomer named Stefan discovered which were five interesting galaxies in the sky. Four of them turn out to be together close. And one of them is in the foreground. But these galaxies have a lot of star formation going on, a lot of activity, and they're very interesting to look at. And here is the James Webb picture, and on the right is the Hubble picture. And you can see the slightly greater resolution, but you can see the extra kinds of things you can see. You can see the dust that's been heated. You can see where the stars are forming more accurately. And you look around the background, and you see more stars and galaxies in the background of the picture. And you can see one big star that's got a six-fold symmetry, which is because of the three tripods. But also, uh, we've been arguing, discussing the, the horizontal line that makes it eight, eight kind of legs in there. Because we need, in one of the pictures that we're seeing, to remove a star from it so we can see 
the galaxy that's sort of behind the star in the distance. There's another picture that I show you a different wavelength, the, 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 the four galaxies and their active star activity. Okay. And here's a picture of the pillars of creation region. This is a very famous early Hubble picture, which there were towers of dust and gas and stars forming in it. But this is all from this sort of region where there's a lot of new star formation going on. The gas and the dust, which came from earlier generations, is now producing a new generation of stars and that's coming up. And this picture, you can see a large amount of stars, the foreground and the background, and some through the dust. Because of the infrared, you can see it more clearly. You can just see it quite a lot of activity. It's a more close up detail. And you can see the foreground stars looking like stars in their shape, six sided shape. And, uh, but you can see the interesting structure in the dust. Here is a James Webb's studies of the gas giant WASP P 96P atmosphere. This is a giant gas giant planet. It's orbiting around the star. It was discovered uh, earlier, but it passes in front of the star and you can see starlight absorbed. And you look at the amount of light that's, that's blocked versus the wavelength of the red light. And you see these bumps and dips, which are due to water vapor in the atmosphere. So you have absolute proof there's water vapor in this planet's atmosphere. And so here's another plot of that with in the background, uh, and that's an artist's conception of the, of the planet, the data so, so, superimposed on top of that. Now, here's the picture that was gathering all the excitement and so forth. And you see in the center of the picture, this really one of the really bright stars that we, we worried about where you can see the diffraction very much. But if you ignore that and look at the center of the picture, you see a cluster of galaxies. And around that, you see large distortions, galaxies stretched out. These are images of galaxies that have been stretched out by the gravitational lensing of the cluster. And it's a very significant amount of lensing and so forth. And in many of the cases, we've been able to find partners, that is the same galaxy imaged two and three times. And uh, we're trying to study that and understand what it means. But also you can see a lot of background galaxies. And this picture, there seem to be only two galaxies out as far as a redshift of seven, that is back to when the universe was eight times smaller, none before that. And uh, that means that doesn't mean that we can't see uh, any further than that. We think that means there are none earlier than that, that that's the, those are the first generation of galaxies. So there's a lot of information in this picture. There's the cluster, there's the lensing by the cluster, and then there's the really distant galaxies that are showing up. And so they're exciting. So here's sort of a diagram. You can look down here in the bottom center, center box, an example of the lens galaxy. And then you can find a partner galaxy to it over on the other side that looks the same, but a mirror image where it was deflected. It, the light took a path the opposite way around the galaxy cluster. And then there's another even smaller image that you can see another one. But it's not just one of these, there are several of these in this picture. And so it's quite interesting because it might really need a lot of information about this. So there is a lot of stuff to unpack from this. And there's a lot more detail. This is more than twice as many galaxies as we've seen in a, in a Hubble picture like this. And so my Billy Billy friends, we're all quite excited to see what we're going to learn from this. But it looks, though, delivering us a wealth of new data about the early universe. Thank you very much.